Hello and welcome to AIL TV. Uh, it is uh, Friday night. I am actually standing in for David Otto from Step In, Step Out. This program is called Security Update. We normally talk about uh, African issues. Now, last week, I went to a, I went to a demonstration. And the demonstration this time was from was by Ethiopians. To be specific, Tigraya or Tigrayans. As you know that uh, the conflict going on in Ethiopia, it is really bad. It is dispersed. Uh, a lot of people, they have fled to Sudan. And the situation really doesn't really look good when, when the African Union itself is based in Addis Ababa, which is supposed to be taking care of African affairs. And uh, more interestingly, on this program, actually I have got young people, of course I call them young people, and these young people, they are British citizens, but they are concerned uh, about the development and the human right abuse that are going on in Africa. So we always ask ourselves, so for example, if you take Ethiopia, right, Ethiopia is a country that many Africans are very, very uh, proud of. They have got the economy going good. They have got the best airline in Africa and it is among the best uh, in the world. So we don't know whether the picture we see from Ethiopia actually fits what is exactly going on there. Now, I don't want really to go on so much. These young people, this is their platform, and they will actually talk about what they think. But before, before I go on, let me just show you a, a clip of what I talked about about the demonstrations which happened last week. And actually, it was actually fully charged with young people. These are the people who are at the far front. They were telling, uh, well, they were actually standing in front of Downing Street, sending a clear message that Britain should stop aiding or supporting uh, Ethiopia. Or it, to be specific, they were saying stop supporting the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Anyway, take a look at the, uh, at the clip. Stop, My name is Mela. Um, as you know, we are here today um, to protest uh, on the war that has been waged on Tigray. Uh, this war has had severe human costs already, and this is not only going to cause a regional complication, but it's going to cause a problem to the whole of the Horn of Africa as a whole. The Ethiopian Tigrayan community in London has therefore organized a peaceful protest today um, to call for the following from the British government. The UK government needs to make a strong stand in pushing for an immediate stop on the war declared on Tigray, a complete halt in the offensive on the region, followed by a politically inclusive dialogue that includes all parties and unimpended access for all international humanitarian organisations and international media and journalists. The UK government needs to call for an independent and international investigation to war crimes that has been committed within the Tigrayan region. The UK government needs to take a stronger stand in stopping the ethnic profiling of Tigrayans in the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, the unjustified dismissal of Tigrayans in prominent roles such as the AU, the military and Ethiopian airlines. The Amara and Isaias' agenda is to steal our land and get rid of all Tigarals. Abiy Ahmed and Isaias Aforkis are war criminals and should be brought to justice. We ask that all communications and electricity be restored now. We ask that all foreign army, Ethiopian army, Amara militias army to leave Tigray. 
Yes, that's what I'm talking about. When you see, you know what really makes me happy just to see young people, especially those who are in Europe, because uh, I believe that they have actually tested what freedom is. These young people now are not afraid to come forward and say what they actually see and what they feel. Right. We've, I've, I've spoken too much now. Now I'm going to hand over to the, the young people who will be telling you what they see and what they feel and what they think about what is going on in Africa. But before that, let me introduce to you my guests. I have got, I, I don't know, so depending on my bearings here, I have got Melat Habutu, is that correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. And then I've got Rita, is it Rita Kasei? Uh, Rita Kasei, yeah. Oh, Kasei, right. And then I have got MC Mose. MC Mose originates from Uganda. The two ladies that you're seeing here, they are from Ethiopia. To be specific, are you from Eritrea? Uh, or no, uh, are you from Tigria or which, which part of Ethiopia are you from? We're from Tigray. All right. You yeah. know, you know what? Let me tell you one thing. One thing that I really want to make clear is that our mind, the way how we are programmed, we think in tribalism. So when I ask, where are you from in Ethiopia? I really want just to know which region are you coming from. It is not that I'm taking sides, and also I should really make it clear that AIL TV, we are giving people a platform whether it doesn't matter which age you are or which doesn't matter what part of africa you're from we are not really interested in separatism and we are not going to take sides we want to hear people say what they think regardless of where they come from so that one i've been having private conversations and they've been saying, why are you asking where I am from? Okay, but I say, yes. You see, I grew up hearing all these kind of conversations. Before you start a conversation, somebody says, where are you from? You see, it is like we, it is being programmed in us. Anyway, so that's enough is enough. Now, looking, looking at that clip, uh, Melat, you were actually fully in charge. You were you were at the forefront, actually, You're really giving it really large. What what makes you what what gives you the energy and the power to do what you are doing? Um, I I would just touch on the fact that I was always passionate about uh, my country. So I was always passionate about Ethiopia. Um, I see my role as an Ethiopian diaspora in London um, to feel change, uh, both politically, economically, and to develop um, Ethiopia, uh, to develop in general. Um, and I think one of the main things that the diaspora should always focus on is how we can give back to our um, uh, you know, we're actually from our heritage and where our land um, is. Uh, we need to be able to understand um, that we are here because we are privileged and we, we had the opportunity to go to um, Western universities to attend, to have university papers. Some, um, of, some other uh, people our age living in um, Africa do not have those rights. So um, I feel like it is our responsibility um, to be able to not forget our roots and to be able to be vocal when needed, to speak up for the people that are voiceless as well when needed. Um, and as you know, because of the um, war that has been waged in the region of Sagar, I think now is um, a great time to be vocal for the people, um, you know, the people of Sagar who are currently going through a humanitarian crisis. Exactly. Myself all the time. So sorry, you know, technology is always always confusing us. If I don't unmute, if I don't mute myself, then some other things happen. No, let us go to Rita briefly. Tell us 
what is your what gives you the energy and what is your stance in all this what do you see africa should 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 be so yeah um so we're very proud of milat for what she did at, the, at that protest and a lot of the youth do have a similar uh, rage or energy for this thing because especially because tigray has been completely blocked out they're in complete darkness and they've been silenced um so they can't they can't make noise for themselves so we have to do it on their behalf if not now like when else when else would we make noise for our people um in terms of africa i think peace first of all is is needed and um poverty poverty needs to be worked on for us to be able to work on democracy and and things like that in a in a fruitful manner okay Jose. Yeah, so um, um you you are from I'll, uganda I'll, uh, can you hear me yes i can hear you you are from uganda uganda today is actually going through similar situation although we are not actually fighting one another like they did but the challenges that ethiopia is going through it is um it is similar to uganda what what, what do you what is your view about whatever is happening in in, in africa basically um in africa we do have uh, an a, a problem of identity that we have so many different identities and these identities really separate us beyond our imagination. And when you look at the, the problems that Ethiopians have now, they are identity problems. Uh, a superior group uh, will dictate uh, the way of life in that region. And because they're more superior, uh, the ones who are less privileged, they have to follow whatever has been dictated for them. And uh, because we do have these identity problems, you will find that these other groups, they find it hard to live um, under such enforced way of life. So that's why you see in Africa, we have so many inhuman way of living because uh, every every group has its own normalities and abnormalities so when you try to force your normalities in a place that is looking at your normalities as being abnormalities so there is a clash so in terms of that then you find that these other poor regions are abused and they have no basic human rights like uh, uh, some uh, my sister said so the problem we have in Africa is we have to sort out these border problems. We have to integrate within Africa, like I said earlier on, and we have to solve the problems, that the basic problems we have before we look into the uh, Western, you know, exported democracy <laughs> that is, um, which which does not really fit our way of life. So, um, as I said, I don't know much about the current situation in Ethiopia. But you can tell that the problem comes from identity and the idea. And uh, in Africa, we don't really uh, focus so much on idea. We focus on superiority, on figures like the leaders, of, the leader of Ethiopia today. The Western countries look at him as uh, a very prominent and the person who's going to move Ethiopia forward. What they don't focus on it is what the factors that really bring these problems and for him he's not going to provide legitimate information you know to solve the problem so the problem itself is difficult to solve and um, hence you have divided countries because especially when you compare ethiopia to uganda we also have so many tribes and i think we are going towards that, the same route because now tribalism is a big problem in uganda and the opposition is using it to justify their drive for leadership. And uh, the main government is also using it, you know, nepotism and all those types of things. So what we have to fight as young people, in my opinion, 
is we have to identify as ourselves as Africans, uh, but we are stuck with these identities that were put upon us by, you know, our forefathers and the, the, the Western colonial colonial masters. At least for you Ethiopians, you didn't get colonized, but you are more likely uh, affected with this by the same issues that are going on. Because Ethiopia is seen as a very, a country that is more organized that compared to other countries. This is because your government only allows information that benefits the leading government. So we don't get to know what the poor regions are going through because that information is not allowed to come out of Ethiopia. So when you, the diasporas, when you start speaking for the people, for the voiceless, I find it quite interesting. Okay, so yeah. now let, let, let me say this. You, you know me here, according to you guys, I'm a dinosaur. That's how I, I put myself there. So, <laughs> uh, Mose is talking about identity. But in Ethiopia, I'm sure people identify the, themselves with regions. So you've got Tigraya, you've got Amahara, you've got Aromos, you've got Afar. And basically, you have got nine regions in Ethiopia. But there are three regions which are always at loggerheads with each other. Now, what I think it is, and also the problems in Ethiopia, it is historical. Because I speak with a lot of, I speak with a lot of friends. I've got friends from Eritrea. I've got friends from Ethiopia. They say, well, look, you know, you can't change. You see, the situation has been there for 3,000 years. So each one thinks that I'm superior. So, Right. So let me ask these two ladies here. Answer me if you think, do you, say for example, Tigria once ruled Ethiopia. Then, you, then there was Amaharas. And, and then, now you have got the Aromos in government. Now, if I ask this question to you, which tribe, uh, which, tri uh, which, which, which region feels superior to another? Then we will come to Ahmed, uh, uh, Abi Ahmed. What do you think, ladies? Um, well, I think, like you said, uh, like many of you have been saying to you before, our, our ethnic conflicts weren't started as some would like to make you believe 30 years ago. These are decades of um, rivalry between different ethnic groups in the region. Um, another thing you have to remember is Ethiopia um, wasn't wasn't rallied behind this one Ethiopian notion. So we had different identities um, and we came together to create Ethiopia. Um, so in order for someone's um, identity to be Ethiopian, their individual rights and their regional rights has to be respected and upheld first, right? So we do believe in nationalism, but nationalism can only exist if individual rights are respected. Um, so this sense of um, an ethnic group being superior to another, um, it's not it's not a modern day question. It's it's been existing within um, within our ethnic relations for a very long time. Um, the problem with it now is we are in the year 2020. So um, and as um, as I pointed out. Uh, we weren't colonized, so a lot of people like to think, oh, we're, you know, Africa's beacon of hope and land of liberty, but we have to go, if we go back to um, the history of Ethiopia, we had intra-colonization, so we weren't colonized by the West, but there was aspects of colonization that happened within Ethiopia by Ethiopians. So um, a lot of Africans, are still reliving, um, you know, they're reliving the trauma and still suffering from the tra trauma that has been created by colonization. We're still suffering from the trauma of colonizing each other. So of colonizing that happened ethnically. So we can't take away the importance of unraveling this trauma, unpacking this trauma and actually sitting down, you know, um, you, eth different ethnic leaders, um, ethnic regional leaders sitting down on the table and actually discussing all the trauma that's that's been happening for, you know, decades. 
Um, this is not a simple solution and it can't have a simple answer. It can't have a simple um, um, outcome. Uh, what we need is a leader uh, who is not quick um, to grant quick reforms and want quick change overnight. We need a leader that is in it for the long haul and is able to sit down and create a political dialogue that is inclusive of all parties. So this idea that um, in Africa, we've always got this thing of, um, it's almost like a wheel, a wheel of blame, where one government goes, the next administration will step up, they'll point the fingers and they'll say, oh, they did wrong, let's persecute them, let's imprison them. Um, and that has to stop. That has to stop. A lot of people now are saying this, this, um, this, uh, this law enforce enforcement operation um, that um, Mr. Abi Ahmed has uh, labelled it as law enforcement. Um, this law enforcement operation that has uh, been targeting Tigrayans um, is because of the the um, the issues created by the TPLF. The TPLF being the Tigray Liberation Front. Um, um, the issues that they've been creating for the last however, uh, 27 years. Um, he said, not only that, but in the last two years since he's been in power, he's pointed um, his fingers at them and, they, and he said, you, you are the reason for all the conflicts happening within um, Ethiopia. Um, however, um, like I said before, this is just a blame game. There's no evidence presented. There's nothing concrete presented by the prime minister to, to conclude that this has actually happened from um, the regional leaders of Tigray. It's just the blame game. Again, I go back to the fact that African leaders seem to opt to um, basically point the fingers and persecute anyone who's either in opposition or a threat to power. And I think um, going back to the fact that we have had um, ethnic conflict within the region for a very long time. I feel like um, we need uh, leadership that has a dose of reality. Um, you need to be able to stop masking over the problems that we have had for decades and actually do the grassroots work on the ground, which I think Mr. Abiy Ahmed has failed to do. Sorry, can't hear you. Uh, okay, uh, again, I'm muted myself. Okay, I'm back now. Quickly, I'm get, I will get hang of it. You see, what I'm doing here, I'm switching a whole lot of things. So, now, you have said you want a leader, a leader who will, who will basically bring peace in Ethiopia? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, which okay. we had uh, hoped Mr. Avi Ahmed was two years ago. He was our beacon. All right, token okay, so, oh, so now... This, there is a challenge there. Already, you have got a problem. So, for example, if the leader was from the Amahara, okay, we know uh, the leader now, Abi, is from the Oromos. Now, say, for example, if a leader was from a different region other than Tigray, Oromos, mm -hmm. and Amahara, will that leader, do you think that leader will be accepted? Because we're gonna, we're gonna. In fact, while we are doing that, let me see if I can actually bring him. Yes. So um, now we are talking about leadership, and we are talking about uh, Abi. Now you will see the captions yeah. just going round, and and all the stuff that they have done. Now let us hear yeah. Rita. Then we will go to Mose quickly. Now Rita. Uh, yes. Okay. I, 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 you are in. You are in. So Rita. <laughs> How do you back? How do you back uh, 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 Melat's uh, uh, ideas that you need a leader who will bring people together? But my question that is this: w Will the Ethiopian people accept a leader, a, a leader who is from a different region apart from these two, three regions that we know of? What do you think? Well. Um, we hope so, but at the moment it doesn't seem um, feasible. Um, the The issue with our leader now is that he's not only um, attacking this political group, the war has spread beyond that. The, there's ethnic profiling of Tigrians, which is the, the region that the TPLF originated from. Um, 
they're being attacked all over as as an ethnicity. Um, we're not, <laughs> you know, we're not asking to be to be treated like better than other Ethiopians. We're asking for our human rights to be met, for our simple human rights to be met. Um, Milat said earlier that he like we need a sl slow reform and to begin with when Abi came into power and he introduced all these amazing things um freeing political prisoners um allowing the parliament to be 50 50 50 50 percent women 50 percent male um all of these new things that sounded brilliant i, I remember i went to ethiopia that year um and even went into Tigray and in Tigray the people seemed hopeful for this new change. Um, so it's not, it's not that this prime minister has um, one ethnicity, it's that he is right now, I believe in systematically trying to create hate amongst the people against one ethnic group and we're paying a heavy price for it. If he went about it in the simple and slow way that an African uh, leader should, this wouldn't be the problem. We need slow, steady progress. So now, let me, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm always glued on the computer. I'm always looking at uh, a whole s sort of things. The problem with Africa, we are coming out with these slogans. You know, like yesterday, yesterday, I, I wish I could just bring this thing on the screen. They had, uh, they had concluded the 14th, I don't know what it is called, silencing the guns. Yeah? Have you heard of that? Yeah. Right. So silencing the gun is actually an initiative uh, started by African Union. But... Even the, the, the president of South Africa himself, when they were closing, when they were opening the ceremony and closing the ceremony, he did not mention anything what is happening in Ethiopia. So what do you think that is? Or maybe, let me put it this way. You as young people, you should pressurize those dinosaurs and then tell them, look, we don't want to hear slogans. We have heard all that. So how can you come and say, we have got this thing called silencing the gun, yet the guns are rumbling in Ethiopia. And where you have got even, you know, this is where the UN resides. Mose, what do you think? So let me, let me hear you. Um, first, I wanted to ask a question. Um, any of uh, any of the two sisters can uh, answer that what are the objectives of this uh, particular group that is uh, the government is fighting what are their objectives because uh, a government can justify that as being problematic a problem that has to be solved whether violently they they, they choose because they have the power so um who, who wants to go who wants to go okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay um, Mela. First, just quickly, um, in order for me to answer that question, I would like to go back yes. to your next question, which was that if someone yes. is from a different tribal group, would they be able to take yes. leadership and still be accepted? Um, that yes. happened in 2018. So when Abiy Ahmed came in, there was no civil war. It was a transitional yes. power. Let me just point out that he was he was voted in um, yes. by a majority of. Left uh, ministers, so the the leadership that he is now um, at war with, they actually yeah. uh, basically voted for him to be in the power to be able to be prime minister anyway. So let me just point yeah. that out. So yeah. He was put in power by the same leaders that he is now fighting, and that he that ha he has worked alongside for the la last decade or so. Um, yeah. Secondly. Um, they did this knowing that uh, Mr. Abiy Ahmed comes from the ethnic Oromos. So it was a very obvious fact that he comes from a different ethnic group and there was no problem um, uh, yeah. caused there. So yeah. I, there was clearly, a unified agenda. 
Exactly. So this clearly shows that there was intentions of a peaceful transition. Uh, yeah. They did not want a civil war because, as we know, a lot of African leaders have had to go to the war to get um, to step down from power. This did not happen in Ethiopia. Um, yeah. There was a politically inclusive dialogue um, where a lot of um, a lot of political um, activists and a lot of like. Um, different parties which were part of the EPRDF which is a coalition which the TPLF was ahead of and um, which headed the parliament in Bosnia. Um, mm. He basically became nominated and became the leader of that party which is why he's in the position that he's in. So yeah. it's a bit ironic uh, from my perspective that a leader mm. that has worked alongside the same people um, is now at war with them firstly. Yeah um and sorry um can you repeat your question because i know it's really well yeah um uh, because what happens in africa now or yeah. usually what has been happening is um the people in power they justify their violence as in solving a problem that might slow the economic progress and 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 human rights so in doing so what they, they yeah. print out or the information that is released is always misrepresenting those who are marginalized. I, I, I don't yeah. know. So that's why I asked what are the objectives of the group that is fighting him? Okay, so the, the objectives, so they're the regional government of Tigray. Tigray is obviously a province in the northern of Ethiopia. They're the regional government. They Oh, there was an election due um, a couple of months ago, which um, which basically Mr. Abiy Ahmed postponed due to COVID nineteen, um, yeah. and he basically said we're not um, the commission, the electoral commission of Ethiopia, which is headed by someone that he has placed into the position to head um, that commission, which again comes back yeah. to the um, to the whole idea of there's no checks and balances in Africa. Uh, yeah. We have a leader appoints everyone in leadership roles and yeah. therefore government is technically uh, a dictatorship um, but again so we go back to the objectives of the TPLF. Um, TPLF um, like re like any regional governments like OPDO in the Oromo region they basically want a, a certain level of autonomy um, they yeah. want uh, their national budget um, yeah. like any other national, um, um, state government um, mm. They want basic the basic um, requirements of uh, basically being a head of a regional government, which was yeah. denied to them. May I add? So we had yeah. budget cuts. We had ten billion, um, which yeah. was cut from the from that region. So when the national um, budget budget was to be released in early November, that yeah. Mr. Mr. Abbas has refused to do that because of the political ideology differences that these two parties were having. So. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say this conflict was started by the defense force of Ethiopian defense force being attacked. However, I beg to differ because I see um, a lot of steps that were taken beforehand um, to basically fuel the, the crisis that we're in today. So the budget cuts to the region was one of them. The roadblocks um, towards the region was one of them. The lack of or the basically abrupt stop of foreign foreign investment within the region was one of them. The inability to tackle the locusts that infested um, the region was one of them. So yeah. there was many steps um, that led into the source. So a lot of uh, nationalists or people that are rallying behind the Ethiopian flag and are blind to the problems, the ethnic um, problems that we are facing today would deny that this has been accumulating. This has been accumulating for over a year, uh, more than a year, um, since 2018, since the Tigrayans were purged out of uh, ministerial roles. So mm. this idea, because our politics is um, very, has its root in ethnic federalism and our parties yeah. are rep represented by um, parties who represent the, eth uh, you know, the um, ethnic group, uh, which is of a, a certain region. Um, when you purge a party, or when when Mr. Abiy Ahmed purged TPLF out of um, power uh, power in Parliament, mm. it's seen as purge a power of that region because there's no yeah. more representation of Tigray in Parliament. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, interesting. 
Yeah, exactly. So when you say what's the objectives of the TPLF, just sorry, I just went on a tangent there. But to quickly answer your question, they have an objective like every other regional state um, government does, which is a certain level of autonomy, which is within our, um, Article 50, 51 of our constitution, um, yeah. of the constitution. So the, what the, the level of autonomy that they want is granted according to our constitution. So... Yeah. Um, they want the, the constitution to be upheld. Um, yeah. They disagree with the unitarian parliament, parliamentary system in, in parliament. So we, yeah. ha we, now have, we now have a modern day dicta dictatorship in parliament because we have a one party system. Yeah. So all these factors um, of federalism have been basically taken out of the constitution of Ethiopia. So which is, it's, it's an ideology difference. Um, I do agree with that. But again, yeah. this has led to a war. Um, yeah. So, so. basically, what uh, what uh, what Melat is saying, you know, maybe in the introduction we should have uh, said that you know when you look at the the map on yeah. on, on the screen, uh, Ethiopia, and if you if you read the Ethiopian constitution, actually it allows every region to have its own government, its own to govern its own affairs. Mm. But uh, I, you see, probably I see that uh, maybe we are not there yet. We are not like uh, Germany. We are not like America. We are not like uh, any other. These two com countries, Germany and America, their, their democracy is grown. So federalism in, in, in Africa might work, but it will take longer. You remember, Ugandans really wanted federalism. Mm. Yeah. And, and, um, and the reason on, on, why it was rejected, it is because yeah. of these ideas of tribalism. Because once just, uh, just, I would, um, yes, I would like. Uh, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, for me, I have this thing which is very unpopular at the moment. Uh, I will need your support, guys. Uh, we need to have an independent African way of thinking. We cannot always try to implement things that we don't understand. So when people keep saying, talking about uh, democracy, um, the, the good thing about internet now has, has globalized everything that the world has become so smaller that we get to see how other country, you know, struggle within their own demographics. So when you look at America now, they have the same problems that we have in Africa. Like even the current president now, he's refusing to concede, you know, defeat. It's the same things that happen in, in Africa. But the problem is because everything that we try to implement in Africa does not suit our own understanding, like our basic way of living. So we try to enforce these values on people who are less educated, less exposed. And, and us who have been exposed and, and had an opportunity to come to these countries and, and learn structures, because for me, I look at it as whatever we learn is we learn how to build a structure and how to make it last longer and more successful so it benefits the gen generations to come because that's that's what they do here. Some of you, you've been to colleges that are 200 years old. In Africa, it's very difficult. So your problems in Ethiopia are quite uh, you know, similar to Ugandan problems. But what I'm surprised uh, is we admire Ethiopia because when we look at how you have kept all these parastatal, you know, establishments. For example, when you look at your airline and the, you know, the federal system, we thought in Ethiopia things are not that bad because what federal does, it 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 provides equal rights to everyone. So you govern yourselves, and depending on that region is understanding. Because so, Switzerland has that, and it's, it's, I, I have got family in Switzerland. So um, I always thought that Ethiopia is a bit advanced, but when you was going through the objectives of that, that's why I asked, because I wanted to know, because that is not something that any foreigner or anyone outside Ethiopia would know. Because in the newspaper, that group is labeled to be uh, terrorists, you know, uh, you know, so many different names, you know. Okay, so yes, let, let me, 
You see, Mose has said that many Africans are proud of Ethiopia. Believe me, we are all are. There are 46 universities in Ethiopia. And wow. I don't think there, is, there are any numbers of those universities anywhere in Africa. So we must say that Ethiopia is actually fully educated, but the historical, the historical events that has taken uh, uh, place 300 years ago. Now, 300 years ago, that is recent. But also you have got a history which is 3,000. And that's why you see, because you, when you follow mainstream media, they will show you what they want you to see. Mm -hmm. They will say this. They will say this. Rita has been quiet for some time now. Let, let us hear. So, Rita, what do you think? Okay. You know, before, you know, I'm always accused that my questions and my comments are very long. Yes, they are very long. Because you see, let me guarantee you, or let me tell you, today, today, after doing this, uh, this program, I have done many programs with adults like me, we dinosaurs, as I like to call themselves. You have really maintained your dignity. You have actually, you are explaining things without emotions. When you know, it's very easy to get emotional charged. I really applaud you on that. And I think you guys, you should be, you should form your own alliance here in the UK and start voicing your, your ideas. It is time now to start challenging the people down there. So you can see like the prime minister in Austria is, 20, is 38 years old. And he, I, actually he started very early. You guys, I don't see a reason why you can't actually form your own group and start discussing ideas. We are here, we will help you. If you want to go to the UN to speak, we have got connections there. You see, Melat, you are saying that you want UN to be involved. Now I can tell you this, if you want the UN to be involved, write down a proposal, yeah? Right, get yourself together with the friends of yours. We will present that proposal to the UN. Because it is you now, guys, to go and speak there. Not them. Never mind Abi, never mind whoever. You. That's how I see. So, Rita, can you compliment what these guys have been saying? Yeah, so um, with regards to Ethiopian Airlines, actually, um, they've been accused of eth like ethnic-based, like purging their workers uh, based on the fact that they're Tagaru, they're from Tigray. Um, so as great as we think they are, they're, <laughs> they're doing quite horrible things. Um, and in terms of uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed uh, postponing the elections because of coronavirus, Ethiopia has a very young population. It's like 60% are under 20 years old. Okay, coronavirus has been quite a difficult thing to manage this year for everybody around the world um and i'm not saying measurement like things shouldn't be taken into consideration when dealing with coronavirus but i strongly believe that he made coronavirus an excuse to um to attack the people in the north the T tplf who want to govern their region um in a democratic way they were elected um and yeah so i think coronavirus was a was a problem and in terms of ethnic federalism the reason that was put in place was because of this one ethiopia idea had oppressed a lot of people um stopped them from speaking their own languages um shut them up killed them if they opposed anything anything related to one ethiopia um, and one ethnic group benefits specifically from one Ethiopia. So it's only them who are really supporting it. We have to look at the rest of Ethiopia, which is really diverse, like 84 different um, languages and, and things like that. And we have to be able to respect them to be able to be one Ethiopia. One Ethiopia is not going to work if 
Ethiopia is represented by one ethnic group. Um, so I think not necessarily, maybe not, I don't know, ethnic federalism, but federalism of some sort needs to, needs to be put in place properly in Ethiopia for it to be um, completely fair on the people that are living there. This question here. This is a personal question, but I have to ask anyway, because you guys, you are you 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 understand the word integration. You see, many 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 nationalities from Africa. You have to remember, it's London, which has got all the nationalities of Africa. They are here. Never mind New York. Never mind Tokyo. Never mind here in London you find all ethnicities from Africa. And many people, they're using this word diaspora, diaspora, <laughs> which the, the diaspora, what does the word diaspora mean to you guys? So this one, talk about freely. Uh, I can start with Mose. I'm going to use this opportunity to, uh, to uh, ask to get to know you guys more and with the new with the new um, technology advantages we can always keep in touch um i have this idea of starting a african diaspora of uh where we can have one platform that when you guys have a problem in, so in ethiopia you know there's a group of young ugandans young kenyans that i can call because we have to create a voice a voice that can really be that loud we like we have internet that we can use 24 7 which our uh, brothers and sisters in africa they don't really have that those resources so um before i go to uh, answer uh, jj's question if we can mobilize ourselves and get serious uh, we could be the next chapter in history of changing things because the problem is we have envy in africa I don't know if you have it in Ethiopia. The, the ones, the young Ethiopians in Ethiopia, they do not really want to give you the platform because they see you as an outsider. <laughs> you understand? Because they, they, their perception of leadership is more on monetary advantages. Well, as for you, you're genuinely, because you have lived in a, in a democratic country, you have, ze you have seen the, 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 the benefits of having a peaceful country. So your perception, to, to, to this idea uh, you, ha you have in your head for Ethiopia is slightly different from those ones who are fighting because the guy you have in Ethiopia today, he had the same values in the beginning. So now he's in power, he changed tune. And what we have to understand is leading Africa is not easy because you have to rule Africans to lead Africans. If you, if you, if you understand my statement, because you have the Western influ influences you know, we don't know how much money these leaders borrow from countries and we don't know on what conditions. So if we can create a pressure group of young, smart people in, 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 in diaspora uh, from Sudan, uh, from Kenya, from Ethiopia, and we have a, a legitimate type of group where there is values to follow and guidance, you know, I think we could be more effective than fighting on our own because had i known that you guys you you were going to to that and i have a group of people and we could call people from kenya so that will put more impact because the thing is people here don't really take african issues serious until it happens to them if you know what i mean for example in ethiopia you you're 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 more divided uh, within you know i think you the tribes uh, the, the, you know the the, the, the understanding or, or the needs you are you are divided on so many 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 reasons. But if there is unity, and someone sees on TV as a huge, you know, a, a big group of young Africans, Ugandans, they will gain that confidence to keep fighting for their human rights. So um, I I, I don't even remember JJ's question. <laughs> that's it, that's I it. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. That, that was the question. So uh, yeah. I'm going to ask uh, Melat, uh, because uh, uh, let me hope that I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Melat, uh, you know, on your, on your video, which has been actually 
uh, which has been viewed 16,000 times or 16,000 views. Pe pe those people have seen what you are talking about. They have seen your demands. I, when, when you say you want the British government to stop supporting Abiy and you want the UN to get involved, yes, you are genuine. You want really to, those people to hear you. But do you, do you see that there is a possibility of those people listening to us? Because Mose has already said that it is not very possible for those governments to listen to us. Because they are the, they, th these governments that we are, we are putting pressure on, they are the same people who are supporting them. They are the same people who are putting them in power. So what other alternative do you think we, 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 we can? This is just a suggestion. Um, well, initially, uh, my first point of contact or the first people I was actually uh, mentioning and trying to push, uh, you know, the ceasefire and are basically the need for a political dialogue to on, um, on Twitter. Uh, was actually members of the African Union. Um, but sadly, I was very disappointed with uh, the outcome of that because as we all know, three envoys went to Addis Ababa and like um, you said, they did not even discuss this in uh, their last conference. And this goes against everything they basically stand for, um, for the whole idea of um, the published agenda of silencing of the guns, which their last uh, big conference actually ironically happened in Addis Ababa in June. Um, silencing of the guns is basically the um, stop of violent conflicts, of deficit governments um, that entail violent um, conflicts, and basically any regional disputes um, over land or resources, right? So the, the idea that we couldn't turn to the African Union to solve African problems is a major worry. Um, it's a major worry that I had to campaign and other diasporas like myself had to campaign for actions to be taken by the UN and by the EU, who has had the strongest stand, um, instead of actually looking at our leaders for change in Africa. So um, I think it's it's a massive, massive uh, task for us as the diaspora to take this on, learn from the fact that our leaders couldn't stop conflict within their own region um and all oh, we're not even interested in stopping it because um some of them have the same mindset of benefit benefiting each other um and so they can latch on to power um so we shouldn't have to look at the eu or the un to intervene in african problems um and i think we really need to learn from that as the diaspora we need to have a united voice um in and basically, the silencing of the gun agenda is, I'm sure, what a lot of diaspora and Africans are pushing for. They are in full support of this. It's sad that we can't implement it on the ground because of the lack of management in our leadership, in our African leadership. But again, so that's the responsibility that we have to step in where they have been incompetent. Um, and I think this intervention of, U of the UN um, is, is basically a last resort or this intervention of the British um, government. For me, it's a last resort, but that's because Tigray is currently going through a dire situation. The UN humanitarian um, uh, establishment have confirmed today that there's no more food, there's no more aid left in Tigray. We are in a survival, surviving kind of stage of, you know, where the people are actually being systematically um, starved and, um, you know, food rations are being used as a as a weapon of warfare. This is what we've seen repeatedly during Af um, during African conflicts, and these are the things we need to er eradicate from um, uh, not just from Africa, from the world, but specifically from Africa because they're really an African problem. Um, and as like you said, sorry to come back to your question, we really need to um, unite to basically push the same agenda of silencing of the guns where they couldn't actually. Uh, managed to do so in Africa. 
let me show you something. I, let me hope that it comes up. And then we will go to Rita because we have got uh, five minutes. Each one will have two minutes to conclude. I'm sure we, you guys will be back. But this is the live news feed, I think, is from the BBC. Let me see if I can bring it up. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. So this is, as you can see, this is actually because many people have been talking about, oh, yeah, you know, uh, some, some news are just fake. They are just bumping out all these things. This is a news feed from the BBC. And today is December 11th, right? Good. So this is what really is happening, and as you can see. Um, and then we have got... We have got one clip here. I don't know whether you will hear it. This, this woman here. These are among thousands of Ethiopians who have fled their country, coming here into Sudan, seeking refuge, as fighting between federal forces and the regional government of Tigray continues. Some of them have been here for more than a week. This is a holding center near the border called Hamdait. Uh, they say they are registered here, and then after that, they get onto convoys and are transferred to refugee centers. The aid agencies have been struggling to keep up with the numbers. But even speaking to some of the refugees here, there are worries right now because the border has been closed. We have seen soldiers from the Ethiopian federal uh, government along the border. We understand that they are not allowing any more people to cross over here. And their relatives who have crossed over are really worried about the situation on the ground. There's an information blackout, and with that border closure now, they are really concerned about the situation of the people left behind. Good. So, uh, did you... Did, did you manage did you manage to hear the sound from the phone good so now let me just unmute everybody here because we need to hear yes um th the problem there is so much propaganda if you come out on the street and and demonstrate they are going to label you you have to remember these governments are very clever he, as mose said that if when you come out they will label you they will call you a terrorist but even when the truth is there to see. Now, I want to give uh, one minute each person to actually conclude and tell us what, what is the next move. Because of already me, I am very happy as how you have conducted this, this, uh, this show. I, I haven't had any sentiments. Even, I, even then, I know that you have got relatives who have lost their lives and stuff. But... You are really very good. This is a very good example. Everyone should see this show. And I'm going to make sure that people actually see it. Uh, so, uh, Melat, we start with you. Um, I would like to call for um, a political dialogue um, rather than opting to violent conflict in all African nations, especially now due to the crisis in Tigray. I would like the current government to uh, follow the constitution, um, the article 15, article 16, article 17 of the Ethiopian constitution, the right to life, the right to freedom, um, and uh, many more uh, constitutional breaches that is um, currently taking place. Um, additionally, I would like for humanitarian, the humanitarian corridor to be open for Tigray, um, as humanitarian aid cannot be used as a means of warfare. Additionally, I would also like um, independent um, investigators and journalists to be allowed into the country. If there is nothing to hide, the government should let the people see what's going on on the ground. That is a major point that I would like to make. We'll come in. Hello, Rita. Um, so we saw that there were four aid workers that were murdered, um, that, that were killed the past few days. Um, but we have to, and there's absolute out outrage, and it's really sad, but we have to highlight the fact that for the past 38 days, uh, the people of Tigray have been blocked out in terms of communication, uh, electricity cut off, no food, no banks, 
um, 2.3 children 2.3 million children are in need of humanitarian assistance. There is critical sort of shortage of uh, water, medicine. There are all these refugees go fleeing to Sudan. Um, refugees, like people that are trying to flee, being stopped from fleeing. Um, there's ethnic profiling all over the country. We're on stage nine of the genocide um, Stage nine genocide, which is extermination. People are being exterminated every day, and we should have as much outrage for the poor African lives um, that are <laughs> that are going away for nothing. For and people don't feel anything. We need to come together as Africans, as you said, um, to come up with African solutions for African problems. Unlike the African Union, who asked the prime minister to 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 stop and was was sent away by him saying um he's going to continue his military operations and continue to torture the people of Tigray. um so yeah that's it okay Mose. um i just i just really um it's, it's quite sad that we do have similar problems in africa and what really the major problem is we tend not to, to we tend to think that Ethiopian problems are Ethiopian problems, forgetting that um, our leaders they support each other to abuse African human rights. So in that sense, I think we have to um, as you know, like I said, everything has a beginning. It could start with three, four people and turn into thousands of people. There's a lot of Africans in the diaspora, especially young people, so eager to see Africa, because look at Dubai, it's not even 25 years old, you know? It's because they have their own domestic problems, but they also have uh, mutual, you know, goals, which we don't have in Africa. You know, our African leaders, they are accumulating a lot of debts that we don't even know we will be able to pay, you know? And we don't, there's no voice that can say no to these certain things. and. For us, we live in countries where you are allowed to talk. And one thing we have to understand is these Western governments, they have interest in Africa. So what they do put there is puppets. So we have to be the, the, the real opposition to these leaders and be able to speak up. And uh, once we have each other, it will be difficult even for those people to, to intimidate us or try to patronize us because it's so easy now to be patronized because when you come in a small group people will look at you and Ethiopians have a problem I, I thought you thought oh and people will say oh Ethiopians there's too many tribes man they're always fighting so they will just leave it like that well as we have the same issues because what Uganda is going through now is the same problem that you you guys are having over there so if we have this i'm looking forward to this uh, united front of diaspora you know we could come up with a name and with the support of people like jj and there's so many people out there in united kingdom uh, kingdom i know for sure that you you write to your local mp you'll get a reply you know because I've, I've i've had experiences where you have a personal problem you lobby your mp and you get a, a reply you couldn't even go to to the house of parliament to lobby your mp so imagine if we are a group of kenyans ghanians uh, ugandans you know we elect our own leadership within us and then we could fight for 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 our motherland i know it's easier said but it could be implemented if people have a common goal well, one so, minute is over. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Okay. We, you, you see, we have got our constitution here too. So we need to, we need to practice timing. We need to keep the time intact. I, I know we started a little bit two minutes past when we were supposed to. Okay. But we will get there. You, if you are not late, then you are not an African, you know, so, but that is not an excuse. So, Guys, I must say I am really, really, really pleased to see you here and discussing issues that are really pressing you guys, but again to remain calm. But also I must thank the people who are watching. Look, I cannot, I cannot really go through all the comments that people have sent, but yes, 
by that, by doing this, you are actually supporting these uh, young people who are concerned. These are British citizens, but they still know their roots, and that's what we are talking about. So next time, I would like you guys, I'm, I have been always saying that, I am looking for a group of young people. Design your own program. Let, we will provide the support that we can. If you want to do a short documentary, we can. If you want to have, if you want to have a weekly uh, program, yes, we can. But I am going now to start talking to my friends that I know. This stuff that we are discussing, it has to be discussed now to another level. You need to, I always say, whatever we say, if, there is, if we are not talking to people who, who influences or who policy makers, it's like we are talking among ourselves. Melat is actually, and, and her friend, they are saying we want the UN to, 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 to be involved. But Abi is going to the UN, he's going to Arab Emirates, he's, 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 doesn't even respect the African Union. So, the, you see, this is how we need to fight. The African Union does not fight for us. That's how we can actually put it. So, if Abi is actually going all the way to, to the United Nations, well, we can get there. You know why? If you read the manifestos of the African Union, it says that the, the fifth column, which is the African diaspora, they have to be contributing to African Union in terms of discussion and dialogue. But I don't see, and nobody has held them to account. But anyway, we're going to do that. Believe me. We, are, we, we might walk slow as totals, but uh, we're going to get there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish here because our time is gone. We can't go. We, we will, let us organize another, another event, another show. But this time, you guys do your own research. I will let you, on your own devices, I will just provide the, the, the platform. You can even find your own presenter because that's what we want to see. We want to see young faces. We can just go back. We've done what we have done. Edge is catching us with, with us. So please keep the momentum. Let me talk to the audience and then we will... Uh, yeah, so... Now I must thank the viewers. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I am sorry I haven't been able to read all your comments, but they are there. And I'm, as I'm always saying, the conversation does not stop here. This video will be available on YouTube, and also you can continue on Facebook and any other social media outlet. Guys, I must say you have been... You have been great, and I'm really happy. Until then, I must say ciao.